Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. Bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update on Tuesday, June 5th, 11.13 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. You're looking at live footage from care of USGS of the Kilauea caldera, the main caldera. And you're about to see a spontaneous formation of a rainbow. Before your very eyes, it's forming right now. Sometimes grand solar minimums are beautiful. Now, this cal caldera, as predicted yesterday in the update, exploded just two hours later at 5.5, which means the explosivity index is increasing. And with the enlargement of the main caldera and the volume of collapsed debris, we can only expect this to continue to get more and more violent with larger explosions. Now at a periodicity of 24 to 48 hours, so we're expecting another large violent eruption in the next 24 hours, 5.5 or greater. Yesterday we talked about passenger plane making emergency landing after hail smashed windscreen and destroyed the nose. American Airlines Flight 1897 from San Antonio, Texas quickly was destroyed and had to turn around. And we have footage of the pictures. Insane. Passengers on this plane got sick, and I don't know how these pilots landed. Look at the amount of damage. That had to be some type of hail. Officials prepare for a long, dangerous wildfire season. Now, According to my predictions, we're going to have a intense monsoon out here. So I think we're going to have an early wildfire season, which we are experiencing now. There are currently two wildfires to the south here in the Ute Reserve, as well as the 416 fire and the Ute fire, the Cimarrona fire, as well as several fires in California. Fires are popping up everywhere. And I believe it's going to be an early season. But down here in the Four Corners region, I'm predicting a huge flooding season in the monsoon. It's going to quelch the fires, thankfully. But before then, we're going to see a lot of burning. And we're going to see no, <laughs> absolutely nothing. Colorado wildfire grows. Firefighters gain on the New Mexico blaze. This is good news. Authorities sought evacuation of hundreds of residents in southwest Colorado. We're talking about the 416 fire. 3,000 acres it has grown to. 10% containment. And that's all it is. It's burning over steep terrain in bone dry conditions. Now 250 miles to the southeast, 1,100 residents of Cimarron, New Mexico are allowed back in their homes which is good news, but this fire hasn't shrunk at all. 36,000 plus acres. Of drought, parched grassland and timber have burned. Nearly 600 firefighters using helicopters, bulldozers, and other heavy equipment have managed to carve containment lines around 25% of the fire. So 25% contained there. Mother, baby, toddler killed in San Benito County wildfire. Three wildfires ignited in San Benito County Monday night and blistered hundreds of acres of grassland before one of the wired wildfires turned tragic. A mother and her toddler and infant were killed. The Panoche fire, airline fire, and eastern fire all remain out of control Tuesday afternoon. Three victims were killed by the Panoche fire where they were inside a camping trailer on rural property. Emergency dispatchers said flames had spread from a burning tree to the trailer on the two 20,000 block of Pinoche Road. This is increasing. Significant weather advisory for southern Brevard County. 60 mile per hour winds and hail. Heads up. 
Cocoa Beach, Palm Bay. The National Weather Service has issued significant weather advisories for Southern Brevard County that will remain into effect until uh, before this show. <laughs> Palm Beach, Melbourne, Cocoa, send us pictures of what fell down. Oh, mother of God. Can we report on something? Snowfall reported Tuesday on Mount Washington. Yes, that's in the U.S. Mount Washington in New Hampshire. Snow fell atop Mount Washington on Tuesday less than three weeks before summer begins. But the weather phenomena is not as rare as you might think, said Al Gore. Stretch of severe weather to disrupt travel and threaten lives in north central U.S., John Benet Ramsey still in the news. Severe thunderstorms Tuesday after midnight. Damaging wind gusts, large hair, isolated tornadoes, flooding downpours. Grand Forks, you're in the middle of the crosshairs. Heads up. AccuWeather Global Weather Center reports a heat wave building in the southern plains this week. Several rounds of strong to severe thunderstorms will ride along the northern periphery of the heat dome and drop potentially large hail, as well as tornadoes in the red zone. Now, warm week ahead, a big chance for a change this weekend in Montana. We're going to get to that. Check out what's about to fall in Idaho and Montana. Yep, kids, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. It looks like upwards of six to 10 inches of snow in Idaho in the upper elevations. Snow levels could drop to five to 6,000 feet in Montana and Idaho over the weekend. And into early next week, we're talking June 11th. Some more eastern snow showing up there in Canada. As well as some heavy snow uh, in western Canada. Right before we hit American summer. Whew. Weather ready nation map. Severe thunderstorms possible in the Rockies and Great Plains on Wednesday. Widely scattered severe storms are possible in the northern Rockies and the central plains towards the upper Mississippi Valley on Wednesday. Most likely areas for severe wind. We just covered them. Grand Rapids. Snow in June. The heat wave is truly over. This town in northern Sweden where they talk about nothing but global warming. They really got their panties in a bunch up here. Here's a scene close to Sweden's northern border. After bathing in an unusually early summer heat wave over the last month, northern Sweden has a rude awakening this week as temperatures plummeted and snow fell dramatically. <laughs> Wonder why that could be. South Island roads reopened after being cut off by heavy snow as we reported on last night. Major Altoigo roads have reopened after snow cut off parts of the South Island, but many schools remain closed. Snow blackening the South, closing schools, canceling flights, and shutting roads. Grand Solar Minimum much? <laughs> Unseasonal heavy rain and strong cold front hits Western Australia, leaving 40,000 properties without power. This guy with a bright yellow vest on, looking like a total D-bag, pointing at a sailboat. Unseasonal rain and parts of record-breaking and strong cold front hit Western Australia on June 4th and 5th, 2018, leaving more than 40,000 40, properties without power and one weatherman looking like a total D-bag. <laughs> Man, I, I just got to make something up. It's getting kind of boring here. Here's the explosion where we... We uh, predicted, and now we're reporting on 5.5 volcanic eruption. Just two hours, we uh, made the update live yesterday. In the main caldera, we have other interesting uh, quakes here. 5.5 in Sinari, Azerbaijan, and Mayote is rumbling with a 5.1 in Mozambique and a series of 4.8, 4.9s, half a dozen in the last 48 hours. Whew. We'll be watching that area closely for a newly emerging volcanic event. Worldwide Volcano News Update. Ebo volcanic ash has been observed. You can see Saku doing its normal weather making. We also have Fuego, Ducono, Sakurajima, Ibiko. Saku exploded again today. 
Fuego has a special report. There is lava being reported. Another lava flow occurring from Fuego today. And here's the rainbow report from the USGS. Let's bring this live and check out what's going on at the Caldera Live. In the dark. As the sun sets, we're waiting on a major explosive event. USGS just put this live. So I'm going to share this with you. You can watch as we're waiting for a large event from the Caldera at any moment. Let's bump it up. We weren't live. We're a couple minutes back here. Let's get it real. In just a few moments, it'll be dark in Hawaii. But I'll leave you links. Volcanoes in Guatemala, Hawaii, and Indonesia have killed 62, over 80 now, and cost the economy millions. Should we expect more? Now, look at this total rag from time. You might be wondering if these events are part of a trend we should be worried about. But according to experts, they are not. <laughs> the eruptions are in any way connected, explains this total idiot, Karen Fontagin, a total non-scientist volcanologist and postdoctoral puppet master researcher for No One University. <laughs> They're not related, according to this postdoctoral fellow douchebaggery, nonsense, funded by the globalist. Check out the stratospheric radiation as cosmic rays increase as we descend into the grand solar minimum. Chinese dynasties collapse. Yes, they do. Well documented by many sources. Here you're looking at the Chinese dynasty overlay compiled by my friend David Dubine over at ADAPT 2030. You can see the Jin dynasty in 1210 with the Mongol invasions. That's associated with the grand solar minimum and increased cosmic ray flux and volcanic eruptions. Southern Song dynasty collapse, increased volcanic eruptions, grand solar minimum. The Yon Dynasty collapse and drought, another grand solar minimum called the Wolf Minimum, also associated with major volcanic uptick due to cosmic ray increase. Then we have the Zhang He Explorations of 1405, another grand minima during the Spora Minimum, also associated with cosmic ray increase and increased volcanic activity causing rapid cooling. Then we have the Ming Dynasty collapse in the 1640s, which we know as, as the Maunder Minimum, which was caused by a grand solar minimum driven by the sun, increasing cosmic rays and volcanic eruptions, causing rapid cooling and the Little Ice Age. Then the Northern Chinese Famine, which we know as the Dalton Minimum, also caused by our sun, the diminishment of our sun in total solar irradiance, causing cosmic rays to increase, causing volcanoes to erupt, i.e. the year without a summer and the Northern Chinese Famine and Qing Dynasty collapse. This is all uh, minor perturbations. In the major scheme of things, we have the Minoan Warm and the major Grand Solar Minima collapse, the Roman Warm and the major collapse, the Medieval Warm, which we were just looking at in the collapse, and now we are currently in the Modern Warm collapse into the next glacial cycle. It has to do with cosmic ray flux, or waning, waning magnetosphere, and explosive volcanic eruptions triggered by cosmic rays. Volcano as a bubble chamber. This is a 2011 paper, which I'll leave you links to. And on the relationship between cosmic rays, solar activity, and powerful earthquakes, Kavalyov, heads up. And I'll leave you links to the China State Dynasty Collapse. Dr. Tim Ball is going to be joining us on our show tomorrow night, Revolution Radio Freedom Slip Studio A, 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. East Coast. That's 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. West Coast time, kids. There is something fascinating about science, according to Tim. 
one gets such a wholesale return of conjecture out of such trifling investment of facts. <laughs> That's Mark Twain. Human Caused Global Warming is his book. The biggest deception in history is the subtitle. We love you, Tim, and I can't wait to talk to you. That's a heads up. Are you picking up what we're putting down? By failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. No wiser words have been spoken. Thank you, Benjamin. One step at a time, one day at a time. Truly, that's all it takes, kids. By not doing that, you are preparing to fail. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Don't be scared. Take one step at a time, one day at a time. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. Dynasties have collapsed in the past. You have nothing to do with this. We're dropping off a cliff. And you're living it. And I'm reporting on it. That's why you've subscribed to the channel. Share this with someone you love. Share this with a global warming alarmist that is getting a little confused about what's going on. There was snow on Mount Washington yesterday. There will be snow in Idaho and Montana. Times are changing. And that's a boom. Be safe, everyone.